Good afternoon guys, welcome back to the channel. Chris Dennis here, putting specialist and short game performance coach. A little bit different from the videos you will have seen probably on Wednesday where we was in Dubai with James Robinson. We're back at Royal Woolley in the cold with three layers on. But today we're going to be talking about chipping. So from the title you can see these are the three biggest mistakes I see in chipping that kill people's game. So they get around the green, they come close, they get all tens, they do these three different things and they start to have a lot more shots around the green than they need to. So the first one, I'd just like to thank the cameraman, he's doing a great job so far. So first one that I see a lot is when people come to chip in, they treat it the same as if they're hitting a full shot. So stance is shoulder width apart, they're very far away from the ball, sat back into the heels and everything gets a little bit shallow. And I see a lot of strikes like that, although that one works ridiculously well. They thin it over the back, they don't get contact, it's very, very shallow even. And very shallow means we might drop kick the ball, we might catch the ground before the one that just goes in front of us. So again here, they're trying to they move off the ball and they start to get it low and don't get any consistency. So very much a drop kick. So if that's you, what we want to do is start to think about, right, what shot do we have in front of us? We can go very narrow, so start very narrow. As we start to get further back, maybe we went to 30, 40, 50 yards, we gradually get a little bit wider up until where we're hitting a full pitch. And that's down to you. Decide where you hit a full pitch shot from. That's when the stance is gonna go closer to your normal swing. But here, I can get nice and narrow. I can get a little bit closer to the ball so that club is laid flat. We've not got the toe in the air. And then from here, we can make a nice simple motion of turning that body back, turning it through. You can see the loft on there, the strike was different and we've took a little bit of a divot. So taking a divot, we've got more angle of attack there. So you can see I've struck that. It struck out the middle of the face. We've got a better contact, we've got a consistent fly and then therefore we're gonna get a more consistent spin. And if we can have more consistent spin, which everybody wants spin, we know where to start to land the ball. And then on here, you can start to think, right, where do I need to land the ball to get to wherever the flag is? And that's one of the biggest things I see from most amateurs. Even when we're getting to single figures, people are stood too far away and have an inconsistent strike. And from there, it's gonna be very hard to chip it close and give you a chance of getting up and down. So let's move on to the second point. So let's get those balls and move on. So the second thing I see is from a lie like this. So the lie that nobody likes behind a bunker, we've got to get over that, we've got to get on the green and we're trying to get close. So first problem here is we've missed the green in the wrong place. So when you're thinking back from your iron shot, okay, you've not done it on purpose, but think of where the miss is. On this hole, for example, at Woolley on the 17th, if we miss to the right, we'll get a nice lie in the grass and we'll be able to chip. We're not here in a dead zone, but this, is the cameraman's favourite shot because here he will use what most of you use which is the 60 degree and from here 60 degree is going to have too much loft so if we have a 60 degree we've got a 25 yard shot we're going to have to make a much longer motion as we know the longer the motion the more that can go wrong so if the cameraman nicely pans around we can see a nice easy drill here and i did a shorter video on this this is where the, this lob wedge from this lie is going to launch. So you can see it's definitely going to get over the bunker, but it's launching very high. So I've got to make a motion that's going to get me 25 yards. James has done a great example of what not to do there. So here we can see I can go down to a 56. Even from this angle, you're going to see it launches that little bit lower. It's still easily going to get over there. So we could go even lower on this shot. I'll just get this in before James tells me I can't tie my shoelaces. So here, again, we're not trying to make the big motion, the big Phil Mickelson. Similar to the first shot, my feet are nice and close together. We don't need to go wider. I'm going to get that club lying flat on the ground and I'm going to make a motion with my body. I don't need to get any hands in here. Back and through. That's landed three quarters of the way there, so I didn't need to use this loft I could have got something just landing over the bunker and running out so one thing I see a lot of times from here is people are trying to think that well, I have to get a lot of wrists in here I have to have a lot of release here I want you to think less release let the loft do the work 
just turn the body back and through and the loft on the club will naturally do that you see here if i switch now to the dreaded club i do get a lot of lessons come who are frightened to bring the 60 i mean don't get me wrong bring your 60s along don't hate them that much if i do the same motion didn't quite strike it as much as i wanted but there, more interaction with the ground. I would have had to make a bigger swing to get that to go further. So wasn't my finest example of that. But you can see we're going to have to make a much longer motion. From there, especially in the winter, the greens are wet, as we know, because it does rain, unfortunately, in the UK. So it's not going to get as much run out. So you really have to be a lot more precise. If we can think, if we can get that ball rolling and we can judge how it's going to run out, we're going to be more consistent at that shot than landing this on the perfect blade of grass that stops, spins and stays next to the flag. So let's have a look at the final point. So the third and final thing that I see kills most people or probably 90% of golfers short game is ball position. So people get around the green, they've not got very much confidence. So the ball gets back and they're trying to really hold the club off. They have no real loft and it gets very jabby. Although that's worked very well. It's like I practice it. You've got it, you've got it. Yeah, that is very true. So everything gets a little bit jabby. A lot of the times I see the club dig in, the leading edge gets snagged and they'll just duff that ball. How many times have we seen people do that? All gets a little bit jabby. So from here, what I want to do is keep a consistent. So it can be slightly back of center. And my sternum is slightly ahead, but from here, we need to make sure that we're getting that chest turning. We can get that ball to loft a little bit and then run out. I'm not holding that club off and making the leading edge dig into the ground because on sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. And then really we're just adding needless shots to your score. So also when people get the ball positioned back into the stance, the club face starts to point open. So from there, I see a lot of people miss chips to the right. So they set up, they feel like they're square to the target. Hands are forwards. Oh, well, I've, I've chipped it okay, but it's now left me an eight footer instead of having a tap in. So we need to make sure that ball position can be just back of center. Weight is forward and we get that face pointing where we want the ball to start. If we open the club face slightly, we can alter that setup and open up. And then from there, we let that club head release and we don't want to use that leading edge digging in. So three things there that kill people's short game, treating it like a normal shot, using the wrong club over the bunkers and then getting the ball position back, bringing in the leading edge and duffing chips in front of you. So if you can take care of those, tidy those up a little bit, you're gonna be able to chip it closer. As a result, if we're closer, we know we can start to hold more putts and lower your scores. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully that's you've picked up the three things that kill most people's short game. Correct those and we'll get the handicap down. Thank you, James.